Year 9 Construction, Lesson 1, Part 1, Constructing a Perpendicular Bisector. We are now going to watch a short video which explains how to construct the perpendicular bisector of a straight line segment. You don't need to make notes as you watch the video, just make sure you understand all of the steps and there will be an opportunity to make notes in the next part of the main video. So we are going to recap some skills from year eight, where you learnt how to carry out some accurate constructions using a pair of compasses. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is remind ourselves how to construct a perpendicular bisector of a straight line segment. So you can see I have a straight line segment on the page here which is uh, 12 centimetres long from A to B. And what we're going to do is construct a line which splits AB in half, so it bisects AB, and it does so at 90 degrees, so a perpendicular bisector. So that will allow us to find the midpoint, which is probably approximately here, of this line AB. So here's how we do it. First of all, make sure your compasses are set up correctly. Your pencil and the pinpoint should match as closely as possible. They should be absolutely on a level with each other for accurate drawing. And you should try and make sure you use a really sharp pencil for this. OK, so I'm going to start by placing the pinpoint at one end of the line segment at A. And then I'm going to stretch it out so its width is over halfway. Okay, it has to be over halfway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arc, which is part of a circle, centered at A, set at this particular radius, which is just over six centimeters, so just over halfway across the line. Now, I can draw a whole circle if I want to. I don't actually have space to do it here, but we don't need the whole circle. We just need part of it. So here we go. Try and do it in one smooth construction like that. There is an arc of a circle which is centered at A. Now, don't change the compasses, keep them at the same width, and we're going to do exactly the same thing, except we're going to place the pin at the other end of the line segment at point B. So I'm going to draw an arc centered at B, which has the same radius as the arc we've just drawn centered at A, and here we have it. Okay, so you can now see that the two arcs intersect at two places. We'll call this one P and we'll call this one Q. And I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to join up P and Q very, very carefully. The more accurately you do this, the better and more accurate your perpendicular bisector will be. So use a sharp pencil as you do this Try and draw your line straight through points P and Q. Now, what have we done? Let's label a few things on our diagram so we're clear as to what they are. So here we have an arc, which is centred at point A. And here we have another arc, which is centred at point B. This line here, this vertical line that we've drawn, is the perpendicular bisector of that line segment AB. That means it splits AB into two equal parts and what we have here, see this point here, that's the centre point of AB or the midpoint of AB which I'll label with a letter M. So AM and MB are both equal in length and you can use a ruler to measure that. So if I measure the distance from A to M you can see that's six 
centimeters so it's halfway along you might find that you are slightly out when you do this and it depends on how careful you've been with your accurate construction now i'm going to take a protractor and i'm going to measure the angle b to m to p there and you can see that's a 90 degree angle i'll draw it in as well and that's why we call this the perpendicular bisector of AB. I could bisect AB by drawing in a diagonal line like that, and that would split AB into two equal parts. But it wouldn't be a perpendicular bisector because a diagonal line like that isn't at 90 degrees to the line AB. So that's how we construct the perpendicular bisector. Now, why does it work? Well, let's take a careful look at what happened here. So all of these points here on the arc of the circle centered at A are equidistant from point A. They're all exactly the same distance from point A. Now, all of the points on the circumference of this circle, this arc here, are exactly the same distance as each other from point B. Now, this point here, point P, and this point here, point Q, are special because they're exactly the same distance from A as they are from B, because they sit on both arcs. If you wanted to, you could take a ruler to measure that. You can see P to B is about 7 centimetres, and then A to P, if we measure that as well, is about seven centimetres too. So that's why points P and Q are special. They're exactly the same distance from A as they are from B. And by drawing that vertical line through P and Q, we then find all of the points which are also equidistant from A and B. So this green line here, every point on that green line is exactly the same distance from A as it is from B. And later on, when we learn about a topic called loci, that piece of information will be very important. Now, really important, when you're doing a construction example like this, you don't need to highlight over with felt pen, that's just for clarity for you. What you mustn't do is rub out these arcs that you've drawn, the construction arcs. So, for instance, here and here, we've got some very, very crucial working, which are arcs. Do not rub out the construction arcs. Some people like to say arcs mean marks. And it's really important that we can see those so we can see exactly how you created your accurate construction. Now, the other thing that people quite often ask is why do we need to do this? Why could we not just measure it with a ruler? Well, the truth is you're actually going to get a much more accurate placement of this midpoint M if you do this with an accurate construction using compasses and a straight edge. If you just measure it with a ruler, it's not good enough, it's just not accurate enough because you could be slightly out. So let's go through these stages just again to make sure everybody understands how you construct the perpendicular bisector of a straight line segment. Number one, set your compasses so they are just over half the length of the line segment as you can see in the diagram. Number two, place the pin at one of the endpoints of the line segment and draw an arc which is centred at this point. I've chosen to do this around point A first of all. Now place the pin at the other end of the line segment, so at point B, and draw an arc centred at B. You must not change the width of the compasses when you're drawing these two arcs. The two arcs must have the same radius for this to work. Now the two arcs intersect at two points, P and Q, and we join these with a straight line. And this straight line, which you can see in purple here, this is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB.